Welcome to Overboard, guys. The Meeple Hurricane is finally in, and I cannot tell you how excited I am to get this thing opened up. Uh, so before we discuss the scoring system on the Overboard Performance Evaluation and how that's going to work, let's just get into this box, and we'll go over some of the specs, and we'll get right to it. Let's go. So when you crack into the box, you'll obviously see your owner's manual, a standard T-tool, and all the charging cables you're going to need for everything. The Hurricane is using Meepo's new M4S remote with greatly improved connectivity and now also allowing you to change the brake forces from the controller itself to the four different brake forces. And finally, Meepo is sending a 6.5 amp fast charger with every order. That's something that you usually would have to purchase separately, so that's a huge thumbs up to Meepo. All right, guys, now let's cover the specs and take a closer look at the Meepo Hurricane, and then we'll discuss the overboard performance evaluation. Meepo's using a set of black rims paired up with 155 millimeter pneumatic tires supported by black nine and a quarter inch double king pin trucks. The deck is about 44 and a quarter inches long and almost 13 and a half inches wide made of extremely durable T703K carbon fiber. They use some extremely unique grip tape for the Hurricane and a pair of really nice anti-sink plates to protect your deck that Meepo will let you customize for free with your favorite number. Now the motors are a set of 165kV 6374s which are currently more powerful motors than the direct competition. When focusing on what really matters like the stator size, this image on Meeple's website speaks for itself. They are set up with a newly redesigned Lingi ESC called the LYFOC 70B providing much smoother braking and more powerful acceleration while supplying 35 amps of power to each motor. The Hurricane's power is supplied by Molasel 21700P42As in a 12S4P configuration to make sure the fun keeps going. Molasels are currently Eastgate's most respected battery to date, making this board a well-rounded powerhouse with truly amazing value. Well, alright, let's get it. Wow, speed one. Very, very mild. I'm just going to go ahead and pop out of this. Speed mode two. A little bit more we're gonna go ahead and pop out of that one get me adjusted here speed mode three. Oh yeah all right we're in the four speed mode guys and this thing is just an animal I'm all warmed up let's uh, cover the overboard performance evaluation real quick now it's gonna be a completely unbiased 100 point test and it's an evaluation from everything from uh, the manufacturer and how much time and effort they put into this board and how well they protected it before it got to my house all the way to that last bar's range and uh, how this board reacts to that and uh, I'm really excited to see how things go I know that's a short and simple little explanation but uh, I got a lot of testing to go so let's just get back to the, the starting spot and get these tests rolling okay so for the first test it's a brake force test and since this has four brake forces we're going to test every one of them what we're going to do is we're going to get it up to 25 miles an hour let's get her up here real quick we are at 25 All right, mark it where she lays. I'm gonna put it right here. You see how this is gonna work. We're gonna mark out every brake force mode with a cone. That was brake force mode one. Felt really good, that's what I'm comfortable with. And each one is gonna be individually marked out for the brake force. Let's see how we end up. Let's go to the center. All right, brake force two. We're at 25. Wow, it's actually quite a bit better. We're at 25. Oh! Ooh! Well, I held on to that one. Definitely a little bit better, but a little sketch. All right, guys, this is the fourth brake mode. Let's hope I don't die. We're at 25 and brake. Oh! <laughs> that. It's too powerful. <clears throat> and that's all I got to say about that. Okay, so we got the first brake mode here. We got the second brake force mode here. And the third is here and about lost control on that one. 
And I'm not gonna mark the fourth one because laying into the fourth one with all of its power is actually pretty dangerous. But about right here is where I jumped off. I don't know if you guys can see, it's very difficult, but you can see some slide marks here from the first one. And it's hard to see, but right about here, it slid sideways on me with that fourth brake mode and I jumped off and had to bail. But So those are the brake modes. Let's move on to the next test. All right, the next test is an acceleration force. We're gonna do it from a few different angles in the four speed mode. Let's get it. And three, two, one. Okay, let me get back up here onto this paved surface real quick. This next test is acceleration rate and the control of the throttle. Now, I'm gonna get us up to about 20, all right? Nail it. All right, feels pretty good, super smooth. Get over to the speed bump real quick. Get it up to about 25, 30. All right, 25, nail it. Super responsive, not much jerk at all. I mean, this thing is about as smooth as it could be. All right, we are at 28. Let me just goose it. Man, I'd say that's smooth as it could possibly be. For my other boards, they both got hobby wings. I don't see a difference in them at all. It is a little bit jerky up in the higher speeds. Like if you're not ready for it, you're unaware, but Definitely can't complain about that. The acceleration rate and the control is extremely smooth on this board. Let's get it from here. Yeah, that's outstanding. Feels great, super controllable. Okay, and for the next portion, we have the torque test. We're gonna do an off-road ability and then we're gonna do a grass hill climb and see how it performs. Let's get it. Okay guys, our next torque test is for the big boys. I'm wearing a 40 pound weight vest and I got two 10 pound leg weights and we're gonna send this board up the hill at a dry weight of 220 pounds to see what it's capable of. All right, weighted hill test at 220 pounds, let's go. Seventeen.
Well, all right, after a long day of testing, my audio piece died, so unfortunately I'm having to do this. But all I'm basically saying is that I'm gonna kill the last few miles on the board and I'd see it back at the house. Well, all right, guys, let's get right through this. We got a $1,650 price range in the all-terrain class. As far as the unboxing goes on packaging quality, the box was nice, it was double boxed, and uh, they had it nice and protected inside of there. With added accessories, I give it a four out of five because there was nothing like special that came with it, but it did have that 6.5 amp charger and it did come with a wrench and a couple Allen so you could actually work on your board. And as far as quality and components are concerned, I give it a 9.5 and that's just because the remote, every once in a while I was noticing I had to kick the board like three, four, five times just to get it to connect. And uh, that might be something that bothers some people. Okay. And for performance, the brake force and control, I have to give it a five out of five, just because there are four different options to choose from. I personally like two and I'm about 160 pounds, but it's about the options and how versatile and how much of an actual difference each one made from the other. All right, now off the line power, I have to give it a four out of five because I expected a little more. The power comes out after about 10 miles per hour, but still, I gotta give it a 4.5. Acceleration and control, I give it a 9.5 because it was as smooth as butter to me. I mean, when I was running 20, 25, plus 25, it was still pretty smooth. I mean, it punched, but as long as you were prepared for it, it felt great, so it gets a 9.5. And for mixed terrain, I gave it a 4.5 just because this thing ripped around on that gravel road down at the park and it also got through the grass like a savage. The uphill climb was amazing on grass. I gave it a 4.5 just because it was ripping up pretty much everything down there. But uh, the reason it isn't a perfect five is just because kind of like the hammer, at the tops of those hills, it wasn't spinning out, it was just kind of puttering out. And that hill climb with the weights on, I give it a 9.5 just because you guys don't realize how much I actually put the board through before I got to that hill. And I know that if it was the first thing that I did, it would have tore up that thing over 20 miles an hour easily. All right, and for agility, the radius and solemn, I give it a 4.5. I actually never ended up doing the solemn, but the radius, I felt like I could just go quicker and quicker and quicker. Those tires gripped awesome. And those double king pin trucks felt great. And the carving is kind of the same, 4.5. The double king pin trucks are just gonna notoriously just carve awesome. And the cornering, it felt amazing. Like I said, those tires, it's like they were just made to rip corners and that thing has so much power, it's just, it felt perfect. All right, and for the wrap up, abused range, five out of five, just because that thing ripped through that last bar. And I mean, that goes for that last bar strength too, five out of five. I beat the hell out of this thing all day long and it just was a savage up until that last bar. Um, comfortability is a four out of five just because that stiff deck and there were moments when I was riding through the grass where I felt like it was kind of, you know, a lot to handle because the thing's so dang wide. And for value, this thing gets a five out of five. I mean, it is just an awesome board. I can't be upset about $1,650 for something like this. And the total score is a 93 out of 100. That is an awesome score. This board is damn near perfect for the value to the performance ratio. Okay, well that's it for the Meepo Hurricane. There is one thing I do wanna mention. On that last bar, when it is over, it is over. It does not have any more throttle. Unlike my other boards where you can drain them dry, which I understand is not good for them. You need to understand that when it tells you that is the last bar, head back home or head back to your car because that is it. So, uh, that wraps this video up. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Keep your eyes out for the TRX 3.0. And until the next time, peace.